Joining us right now is the Hall of Famer, Marshall Falk. I feel like I'm living a dream playing the guys from my video games. Uh, now I'm getting a chance to talk with them. It's ridiculous. How are you, Marshall? Doing good, man. Doing good. How's it going with you guys? Doing well. We appreciate you taking some time. And, and uh, I, I want to start with just the festivities over the weekend out in Canton. The joy for us to watch some of our favorite players get inducted. But what was it like for you to be there and to see these guys up close? Oh, man, it was awesome. You know, uh, and I think w- w- what made it even more special was the fact that last the last last year we didn't get to have one. And, um, I mean, it was, a, uh, it was a big one, too. You know, we missed a big one. Centennial class, centennial class we had 20 guys go in. Um, and you saw Saturday, those guys were recognized. Uh, and then uh, Sunday, you know, we, we got the class of 2021 to go in. But um, any time we can get together... You know, we get you know we get in the room and uh, the stories start flowing. Um, uh, just the information, uh, the how and whys, and uh, you know it's 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 just it's just great to be in that room. Um, I just look back and I, I I think about the guys that I grew up watching and the guys before that that I watch film on, and I think man, it's awesome. It's just awesome that that I get to be in this room with the pillars of the NFL. Were there any of the speeches in particular that, that struck you as a Michigan guy seeing Charles Woodson sing Boys to Men to his mother hit me real hard? How about for you being out there? Were there any moments from the speeches that really grabbed you? All of them. All of them, man. All of those speeches were impactful. Uh, and if you, you know, if you listen to the messaging, everybody, everybody had, I mean, they said in some way how we as a people need to find a way to live in this world and coexist and all not just get along but but thrive along and that's what that's what that's what everybody's message um after they said their thank yous and 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 uh you know the people whom helped them get there and all of that stuff their message was pretty much the same and it shows that a lot of reflecting went went into them giving their speeches and, and what happened in 2020 and all the stuff that we were going through in our country, um, that together we're better. Well said, Marshall. Marshall Falk joining the show. Ben Lyons in for Rich on the Rich Eisen Show. As we embark on this new season, a big storyline, obviously, Marshall, is vaccinations and which players are getting the vaccine, which ones remain unvaccinated. I know this is an issue you're very passionate about, and you're doing some work with the Legends Committee to inspire people to go out there and get vaccinated. What can you say about the work you're up to right now? Well, the work that the work that I'm doing is just uh, allowing people to give for us to give each other space. If I choose to be vaccinated, let me choose to be vaccinated. If someone else chooses not to be vaccinated, let them choose not to be vaccinated. The beauty is in the education and explaining to people who may not be. Um, what's at risk, and the people who decide to be what's at risk. Because I think sometimes we, we, we all just want to be in the same little bubble at the same time. That's not going to ever happen. Individuals will be individuals. And um, if you think about our great country, you know, it's the fact that you get to be an individual here. And so, so we have to just find the space to allow uh, people to make the decisions. And I think what we're doing what, and what I'm doing on this is, is, is saying, hey, listen, um, don't listen to the, the, the lies and the falsehoods that's going uh, around social media. And I'm a person who have, I have a lot to lose. And, hey, I got vaccinated because I want to be responsible um, as a person whom I was at the Hall of Fame. There's a lot of people walking around. They want to fist bump. They want to hug. They want to do stuff. And and. If there's a level of responsibility that I can say I've taken that step, that's what I want to do. I want to be responsible. Marshall, oftentimes retired players will think about the game today and which players they would love to compete against or compete alongside. Obviously, you never faced anything like this while you were playing in the NFL. Do you think back what those conversations might have been like with teammates in the locker room or on the planes? when it comes to getting vaccinated and living in this COVID world that we now are in? Well, you know what? Um, I'm going to tell you, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't like this, but the, do we play and 
Do we get on a plane? Is it safe? Do we travel after 9-11? That was a big deal. That was a big deal. And, um, you know, we had so many team meetings. The league was wondering, do we continue to play? And what's the best decision? <clears throat> and and I think I think even in that sense, making the best decision collectively, it's always the better choice. And and here's the thing, everybody's not going to be on board. That's the that's the reality of it. It's impossible for everybody to be on board. But um once again I'm I'm always go back to this. For the people who 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 decide that they want to do whatever opposite is of what the majority are doing, allow them the space to do that. Just educate them on so they understand where they're at. That's what this whole campaign is. That's what it is. Marshall Falk, amongst the NFL alumni, speaking up to encourage people to get COVID-19 vaccinations. Ben Lyons in for Rich on the Rich Eisen Show. Getting back to the festivities out in Canton, Ohio, you mentioned being around so many people. Is there anybody that you see in particular that just warms your heart or gets you starstruck or brings a smile to your face that you see off stage, not necessarily one of the the inductees, but just somebody you run into that always warms your heart. Oh man, um, you know <clears throat> when you walk around the museum and and the people that pridefully work there, that live there, um, you know they they're, they're proud that they they've only lived in Canton. And here's here's what I'm gonna say. This here's the best feeling ever. When you're a Hall of Famer and you walk around there, every person that lives in that town. They're, they embrace you with this, welcome home, welcome home. And that's such a good feeling. That's such a good feeling. Um, most of us in life, we just want to be remembered. But when you realize that there's a museum with my likeness and what I do and what I've done in the game of football, my family's family, family, they're going to always be able to go connect and show their kids, kids, my great, great, I don't know how many greats you want to go back. I'm there. And I'll tell you something that's interesting. That, um, that So uh, they, they built this thing called Centennial Circle downtown. And um, there's a couple of establishments around that. One establishment uh, specifically is uh, it's Jersey Sports Bar. Um, uh, the, the owner of it, what he did was he took it a step further. If you played it down in the NFL, at his restaurant, there's a wall where you can go and find whoever that person is. Whatever year, whatever year you came into the NFL, played it down. You're on that wall. One, I'm, I'm talking a cup of tea. I'm talking about a play. Wow. You're on that wall, and that, that that's taking it beyond the Hall of Fame. You know, and I just think it's it's, it's awesome, man, because we all just want to connect and we want to relate. And that's what this that's what that's what that week does for all of us. And it, it was it was much needed after last year. Marshall, we saw some of the amazing busts. Uh we talked about it. I'm wondering what you thought. Who had the best hair on their bust? Was it Edge? Was it Drew Pearson's Afro? Or Troy Palomalu? Who had the best hair bust that you saw over the weekend? You know, I'ma actually go Alan Fanica. Oh. Yeah, just check it out because if you you look at him now, and you look at him then, it's like wow, and he's a whole different person. He's a, he's he's half the man he once was. Yeah, doesn't he run marathons and stuff now, or does it triathlons? Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. 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 He, he really. Uh, it, it was just it was like and and I, listen, man, I'm, Jimmy I'm all, Jimmy I'm Johnson's too. Jimmy line. Johnson's hair doesn't even move. You, you, you don't understand. I'm all about the offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the offensive linemen. Literally, we're we're sitting in the Ray Nishki luncheon, and um, I sat down at the table with all offensive linemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Orlando, zone, Pace man. probably was at your yep. table, right? Yeah, yeah. Pace was at my table. Uh, Zimmerman, McDaniel's, um, Walter, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, Orlando. Yeah, that's a, yeah. It was uh, yeah. How great was it to see Isaac get his due over the weekend? Oh man, man! I, you know, as a as a as a grown man, I cried for him because I know I know what it means to him. I know what it meant to me, 
and I know the work that he put in to get there and what he what he had to go through. Man, that was just um it was awesome. And can we talk awesome. about Kurt's beard? What's going on with that? No, I, I asked him about it. I was like, what's going on? Uh, that's it. <laughs> just, just laziness? That's all. Kurt, Kurt don't give much of it. Uh, that was it. That's all I got from him. <laughs> Marsha Falk joining the show, sharing some memories from that historic day out in Canton, Ohio over the weekend. Not the first time, Marshall, you've had a front row seat to some historic celebrations. In fact, you were in this studio when the Rich Eisen Show revealed its sign. What do you remember about that historic day in studio yeah, here on man. the Rich Eisen Show? <laughs> you know, similar, and, and uh, I know you guys are laughing, but, you know, I was, you know, I, I watched I, I watched the radio show turn into a podcast, and then the podcast become an actual thing. And, you know, anything that you, when you're building, a lot goes into it, man. And I just know that I know the, 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 the blood, sweat, and tears and the energy that Rich and everybody that's there, that's, you know, a lot of the day oneers, um, what they put into it, you know, uh, Brockman and, and, and Del Tufo. I mean, it's, a lot of work has went into to what this show has become. And, um, you know, I'm just proud to have been there. Uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. And I'm always thankful when I get a chance to pop on the show and just, just share my insight um, on, you know, whatever the issue may be, uh, even including football. Marshall, you were here for day two when we unveiled Rich's bust, too. You and Marcus Allen yeah. were here. Yes. I mean, listen, everybody doesn't get a bust in life. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> Rich has a bust. <laughs> that's incredible, Marshall, to see the growth from this group. Uh, like, uh, Del Tufo can now pull a piece of cloth with string. He can do that now. <laughs> yeah. He's really grown. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. Just yeah. I mean, just 1% better every like, day, right, Mike? Yeah, there yes. you go. Yeah, I mean, you know, as I'm saying, like the the the, the group may not have grown, but the fan base is grown. <laughs> they're still the same. They're still the same people. Oh, good stuff, Marshall. Finally, do you put salt on your McGriddle like Jerry <laughs> yeah. Jones? We've been talking about that a lot today. Salt on your McGriddle. Did you see Hard Knocks last night by any chance? Has Marshall I ever had not. a McGriddle? I'm betting Marshall I hasn't did had not. It. Yeah. That was one of the big clips, Um, like Jerry's on the phone trying to figure out what's going on with Dak, and he puts, like, basically half a thing of salt on this McGriddle sandwich. (laughs) You know, I I, I mean, wouldn't that, because the McGriddle, like, it's sweet because of the pancake, the the, the bread, right? Right. So I would would only say that's like um, when people put salt on watermelon. You know, it's that sweet, salty, it's like a little thing. It's the only thing I can say. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but anytime you're turning to a pancake for support, you're kind of already losing, I think, Marshall. (laughs) Um, We appreciate you taking some time. Thanks for (laughs) hanging out with us for a little bit. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Marshall Fox. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.